V for Vendetta hit the comic industry in 1982 with a startling artistic vision that helped establish the rising careers of writer Alan Moore and artist David Lloyd. And in 2005, the Hollywood big-budget film version of the book came out. And, of course, it's well known that Alan Moore has a hatred for adaptations of his work that burns with the heat of a thousand suns. But what's lesser known is what David Lloyd thought of the film. And you'll hear from Lloyd himself about why he differs from Moore on the film. And he'll also discuss his unique artistic approach. Coming up next. Hello Heroes, 4 k here. You know, I've had the trade paperback of V for Vendetta in my collection since the 90s. I loved the book and really enjoyed the movie adaptation. So when I got a chance to talk to David Lloyd at Comic-Con 2011, since he's known in the industry as one of the most flexible artists around who uses strikingly different art styles depending on the project, I asked him what his approach was with V for Vendetta. Uh, well, it's quite simple. I can, I can describe it in a, in a very simple way. We were telling a story about a very stark, bleak future. Um, so what, do you, what sort of style do you use? A stark, bleak art style. It was that simple, in one sense. But you need to have experience of those art styles that, that, that maybe could be transposed to that, to that form. So I was a big fan of an artist called Tony Weir, who did a, a Western newspaper strip called Matt Marriott, where he used just light and shade. He didn't use any contour lines. Um, and also, I was aware of the work of uh, one of the great American uh, comic artists, uh, Jim Steranko, who had done this really great uh, crime noir uh, book called Chandler, where he had used, obviously, bouncing off that 40s tradition of uh, film noir, uh, you know, just shadow and light to tell the story. So with, with both those influences, I thought, well, that's the great, that's that's the perfect thing to do, to apply to Vendetta, and uh, that's that's how we did that. Now I was chomping at the bit to ask him about the movie, but first I asked him what he thought of the adaptation process in general, just the idea of people taking comic book work of his and turning it into a different medium, and that's when he dropped a bombshell. Lloyd said that back in the day, both he and Alan Moore. Moore, who now says comic books should actually never be adapted into movies under any circumstances. Back in 1984, both of them were psyched about a V for Vendetta movie or even a TV show based on the comic. Well, uh, first of all, I have to say that uh, in the early days of V for Vendetta, when myself and Alan were, were doing it, and we, we owned a copyright of it, um, uh, we were happy to try and sell it as a movie. Um, and I, around about 84, in the early days, we recognized the potential of it as a movie or a TV show because what actually sponsored or what actually inspired our idea of V was basically TV. Um, TV shows and movies had initiated our desire to do something like v, v for Vendetta. So we thought it was a natural idea to turn it into, into a TV or film thing. Um, Later on, of course, we didn't own V. When, when we sold it to DC, we sold our copyright um, happily. Um, we had good contracts uh, uh, for it, or contracts that we, we imagined were OK at the time. We didn't know how successful it was going to be. Um, but we were very happy with, uh, with making the deal with DC. And then later on, of course, uh, there were the film projects, uh, the, the, the possibility of film projects that came up through uh, Warner Brothers' connection with uh, DC. And um, there was one screenplay that was written that was terrible, the, the very first one I saw that was a disaster. And then uh, there was another one from the Wachowski Brothers, which was very good, and actually closer to the original than the, than the, the final one turned out to be. Um, but um, I was very happy with the idea of, uh, of V becoming a, a movie. And um, I think what happened at the end of the day was that a, 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 a very good movie was made, a good version of the original. It's not as good as the original. Um, in an ideal world, it would have been closer. But what they did with it was great. Um, and they added their own creative juices to the, to the mix and produced a great movie. And uh, I was very happy with it as a good movie and supported it all along the way when it came out and um, and 
you know, uh, it, it's a wonderful uh, vision of, uh, of V, a cinematic vision of V, and um, for any faults it may have in, in, uh, in combination with the original, um, it introduced a lot of people to V that never, never, would never have known about it. Uh, it introduced it to a massive audience, a worldwide audience, who would never have seen it, even despite the fact that V was very popular and uh, uh, globally uh, published. Um, many more people saw it in the movie, and a lot of people saw it and went out and bought the book too. So I think it's been very beneficial to, to the original and maintains the idea of the original, the central core, which is the most important thing. Well, I think they did a great job, and I think that that's largely due to the fact uh, of the cinematographer, Adrian Biddle. Um, and sadly, that was Adrian Biddle's last movie. Uh, he was a great uh, photographer, uh, did uh, Aliens, the, the second uh, uh, Aliens. And uh, he obviously understood what was required and produced a great vision of, uh, of what was needed for that, for that look. Um, it does look very much like a grim kind of London. Um, the kind of grim London that I grew up in um, and I was a very, very familiar with. And um, I think he did a great job. I was surprised to hear how different Lloyd's opinion was from Moore's on the movie and asked him if they'd ever had a chance to discuss it. Uh, no, I haven't. I mean, uh, the last time I spoke to Alan uh, in... in uh, in connection with the movie was that uh, Joel Silver and uh, Larry Wachowski asked me if I would phone and ask Alan if he would not take his name off the movie because he, he got very upset uh, uh, in the early days of, uh, of, of, the, uh, of the promotion of the, of the movie um, and wanted to take his name off the movie and, and I thought that was a bad idea um, because, however, you know, however close to the movie, uh, to the original movie was or not, I, I thought it was important that the foundation stone of its of its original creation was on on the credits. And uh, and I said to Joel and and uh, Larry that uh, that I knew Alan well enough to know that when he makes up his mind about something, you know, he. You can't really change it very easily, but I I I, I wanted to to do that favor for them, uh, so I called Alan about it, and you know I couldn't change his mind about it, um, um, which I kind of regret. But you know, they, Alan is his own man and is entitled to his uh, his own viewpoint, and um, uh, it's just one of those things. Since Lloyd and Moore had such divergent viewpoints on the topic, I asked him what he thought of Moore's anti-adaptation position, and Lloyd went on to launch a rather passionate defense of adaptation creative rights. Well, I mean, everybody's entitled to change their mind. I mean, I, I you know, I, I, I can only tell you that in 1984, um, Alan didn't, didn't feel that way. Um, Everybody's entitled to change their mind. I mean, I can't really say more about that. Uh, my my viewpoint is that as long as uh, something is treated with respect um, and not abused, um, uh, then uh, especially the initial idea or the central idea of a concept is treated with respect then there's no reason why you can't make a movie of it. I mean, uh, David Lean made a movie of Great Expectations where he changed the ending. Uh, it's still a great movie. Um, Blade Runner has absolutely n not much or little uh, uh, relationship to um, do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep, but it's still a great movie. Uh, Stanley Kubrick made The Shining, um, which Stephen King hated so much that he wanted to make his own TV version of it. But Stanley Kubrick's The Shining is still a great movie. Um, 
I, you know, you either have that uh, flexible attitude or you don't. And um, I, I think that a lot of Alan's work beforehand, before V, from Hell and League of Extraordinary Gentlemen were, in my opinion, terrible, terrible films and uh, had nothing to recommend them at all. Um, and in light of that experience, perhaps that, that may be changed Alan's attitude. I don't know. Um, um, you know, I can only tell you my viewpoint, which is as long as what is produced from the original has the core, the key of what was meant, um, I'm happy with it. And, and uh, of course, if I was in control, um, I mean, I, my, one of my latest works, uh, Kickback, a crime thriller, um, this month, or not this month, but the, in August, I will get back the rights to owning that myself as a movie option. And um, uh, I will be in control of that. Um, and I will make sure that if there is any production made of that, um, I will make sure that it is in line with what I want. Um, uh, and, and if you have control of something like that, then you should use that control. Um, with Vendetta, I wasn't in control of it. I, you know, we didn't have the copyright of it, but I'm, I'm very glad that they did a good job with it. Um, uh, in an ideal world, of course, we want the, 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 the best control of everything we create. And uh, with Kickback, I'll try to, to do that myself. Um, not only will I try to do it, I will do that. Um, because that's my, that's my um, uh, need. Um, but uh, I think with the Vendetta, uh, bearing in mind all the things that could have happened in Hollywood, uh, what we had was a great, was a great film and a, and a very influential film that, that not only spread the, the message, the essential message of V, but also um, introduced people to the book. So for me, it was a win-win situation. That was David Lloyd discussing the artistic value of the adaptation process and also how the infamously anti-Hollywood Alan Moore once wanted Hollywood to come a-knockin'. If you'd like to hear more from Lloyd about his unique approach to art, check out some more from the interview, link in the upper corner. And we'll see you here next time on Hero Journalism. <laughs>